and welcome to the channel. In this week's video, we'll be discussing a new float, um, My Deal, which listed last week. Um, gr great success, at least on the first couple of days, um, trading at one point on the first day over 100% um, profit for those who were lucky enough to get into it. Um, but interesting time to discuss the stock because really the landscape for e-commerce companies has changed, uh, or at least the perception of the landscape of, of e-commerce companies has changed so much in, in only a few days. Um, here is the share price. You can see um, yeah, opening the listing price was a dollar. Um, the, these are the closing prices, so I should say on that first day while it traded and closed just below $1.80, it did trade above $2 at one point. Um, and subsequently, we've seen a, a pretty consistent sell-off up until $1.30. I'll get into the reasons why, why that is happening in a sec. Um, I thought it might just be instructive to talk about the business model for, for my deal. It's not a company I knew well until I started to do some work on it um, recently. It's certainly not a product, uh, not a company I've used, um, but it does almost seem a little bit of a hybrid between Kogan perhaps and, um, and Temple and Webster. Uh, it does have a good, good exposure to, to furniture. Um, but and, and also like Templar Webster, it, it, it does look like it, the majority of its business is done effectively on consignment. So it will uh, sell and the, uh, the sorry, it will act as the, the marketplace, and then the, the seller will ship the products. Um, it makes uh, money through transaction fees uh, primarily. There's also advertising revenues. Uh, but I think this is the interesting one, and this is very much like Kogan, which is, which is what I said at the, uh, just at the top of this section, is that um, a big part of its business is private label products. Um, as we know with Kogan, private label products for these sort of companies are far higher margin, and, and certainly you can see one of the goals for this company will be to grow that uh, as a percentage of overall sales over time. Um, you know, any, any story I think with an e-commerce company at least coming to market now is largely about the, um, the change in the industry. Um, this, this first table is um, talking about the increase in retail sales um, and online adoption rate. Um, this is, the, I think, the interesting part here. You've seen um, the difference between online back in 2019 and for this year is looking like it's going to be a 21% increase. Um, and this is, I think, where the, the the question becomes interesting: Is this a is this accelerating a trend that's already there, and there'll be no dip back, um, dip back this year once the pandemic's behind us? And if that does continue, I think the, the you know the story for these e-commerce companies is, is is more compelling. But I personally am kind of of the view that this might flatline for a little bit. Um, I was in. Very, very popular Eastern Suburbs shopping centre on Sunday, and I can tell you it was as busy as I'd ever seen it. There was a traffic jam in the in the um, parking lot, and certainly even just in, in the shopping centre, it looked like it was it was as busy as ever. So I don't think people are done with shopping centres. I think certainly part of the uh, the population are mom, far more comfortable shopping online now. Perhaps. Some people who weren't even shopping online at all are going to continue to do so. So I absolutely think that part of this gain will, will be sustained. Um, but this is the question, is, is where it goes from here. Um, and I think this is, also, this is also good, showing where we are compared to other markets. And this is more specifically uh, furniture and homeware. So this would directly impact my deal more if this caught up. But there's no doubt that Australia, um, both e-commerce and certainly penetration, as you can see here on, on for online furniture and homewares, pales in comparison to where we are in the US and the UK. I think part of that is, until now, we really haven't had a great selection of options. Um, there have been a number of excellent online furniture retailers in the US for some time. Um, so yeah, I do think you know we're just behind the curve here, but we will catch up. Um, so. I, I think there's merit in this, absolutely. Um, this just talks about the um, how the model works. As I mentioned before, the seller actually ships the product, which is which is nice. Which means that my deals capital is not stuck in um, in inventory like it would be uh, if they owned the um, the product and bought them wholesale. Um, this is also a nice split on the on the difference in in key product categories. Furniture, like Temple and Webster, um, remains the 
the number one category, but they do kind of branch out to, to m many different categories. Um, and this is important as well, the, um, you know, the growth in uh, transaction value um, on the platform. Um, I think this is in interesting to see that between FY18 and FY19, you actually saw a dip. So this is really a business that has only taken off as the pandemic has, uh, has hit us. Um, the, the very anecdotal uh, evidence of me using the the, um, the platform just to get an idea of, of the um, of the capabilities of the website and, and what they offer is that it's you know it, it's probably not the best one out there. I, I, I would personally consider Temple and Webster a better platform and probably more advanced, but there's no doubt that um, this is a you know pretty compelling uh, offering and you know it's it's certainly good on a value perspective. Um, but I wonder where this would be without the pandemic. Um, and you know, you have to understand that because of the hype of these sort of stocks, um, simply trading, uh, simply coming to, to market through an IPO and then trading at a very large multiple of sales, because I think they did sales of um, revenue of $16 million or so for the most recent financial year. And even after the falls from the, from the first day, it's, it's worth about $350 million. So this is a very, very big number. Um, and you know, even a premium, as I understand it, to what uh, Kogan and, and uh, Temple and Webster, which possibly are, are more mature, but still clearly early on in their in their life cycle. Um, and yet, it almost feels a little bit of a of a bubble in this e-commerce space. But whether it's a bubble or not, I think will depend on, on that earlier chart that I showed, whether the um, the growth from this higher base uh, is sustained or we, we, we see a little bit of a dip. And if that's the case, I think a lot of these e-commerce companies are going to have some significant downside from these levels. If they, although they, I should say, I still think the, the long-term outlook for the best names um, remains good, um, but I would probably gravitate towards the better names in the sector rather than any name in the sector. Anyway, that's it. Thank you very much for, for tuning, uh, tuning in. Uh, I should say, if you like this video, please, uh, Please click like and subscribe and, um, and I'll be back to you next time. Thank you.